my room. Is it live? Yep. Welcome to World Hoppers, which is a collaborative channel where all of the ad revenue and revenue for merchandise goes to charities. And we're here to talk about uh, fantasy stories that are inspired by settings outside of Europe. Um, a lot of fantasy stories, especially the big popular ones, are European inspired, which a lot of us love. But Abby had the great idea that we should talk about stories that are inspired from different countries, different mythologies than Europe. So that's what we're here to talk about today. And I feel weird because I'm in the middle. I, feel like <laughs> <laughs> I know I saw your book stacks and I was like, oh my God, this, ooh, this is some beautiful books. <laughs> we definitely have some that are overlapping, but I guess um, we could start just basic. Like, do you have a favorite setting outside or like favorite country mythology that you like to look for outside of European stories? Huh. Or I just feel like I... I tend to go for like the Middle Eastern, North African. Um, that's like my jam that I gravitate toward the most. Um, I like a little bit of Indian, like lore and mythology setting. Also, I haven't gotten super into that, but like I'm intrigued. But yeah, definitely like African and Middle Eastern has lately been. My jam. Your jam. Your jam. Yeah. yeah. My jam. My jam. <laughs> I like the Middle Eastern mythology, like the when it has like the gin and the deva. And you can probably like me going into the favorite that I want to talk about. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a I good have one. No I have no idea you would talk one. about that one. I mean, who would have thought that I would bring up the deva bad trilogy <laughs> in, a, in a video on non Western inspired fantasy? Because it's like my favorite Never book ever. But <laughs> the deva bad trilogy. Yeah. Um, and just like everything that's in here. I'm sure yeah. we all had it, but I wanted to make sure. I could yeah. I would like I to go ahead and say, it. Jashana, be quiet. I Listen, I'm not. I see you. Be quiet. This is nothing. a positive CEO. I okay. love it. I don't love that's the character. Right. Mm -hmm. so be quiet. Anyway, we yeah. won't talk about that. <laughs> I feel the same. And I obviously, they're not as. Uh, I guess easily easy to find or readily available, but definitely the the North African, especially like I want more Egyptian inspired stories. But mm -hmm. there's been a couple that I've really liked, and then been recently, especially Jade City, Jade War, reading some oh, Asian inspired. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't get I super into a little like seasonal because like when it's like, summer, I really gravitate towards like. Davabad, I read the Araria. Is that what it's pronounced, Steph? I can never pronounce the We Hunt the Flame, We Free the Stars duology. Oh, but yeah. that one's also very there. I want to read that. I'm like perpetually the on the, the hunt yeah, for the high fantasy. In <laughs> well, I don't know. It's just all warm. And I'm always on the hunt for high fantasy in South America or Central America, which there is mm. not a lot of. I mean, yeah. in, in young adult, a little bit, and in middle grade, but in adult. It's like Sylvia Moreno Garcia and like Zoraida Cordova is like sneaking in. Yeah. And it's like it. <laughs> um, so those are like my, and I also have some Caribbean. So like, I guess that part of the world, but that's, I'm Venezuelan. So culturally I keep trying to find like mythology and stuff. So. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah there's I mean, not, I'm, there's like hardly any. Yeah. So, there's one coming out by Orbit cool. next year by a Venezuelan American author. And I'm just Ooh. like, I really hope I like it. Like, yeah. I really want to like it. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'm with Jashana on, like, the Middle Eastern um, and then also the, like, Asian-inspired ones. So there have been quite a few. I feel like that seems to have been a th not necessarily a theme, but, like, publishing has been producing yeah. more or publishing yeah. more Asian-inspired fantasy stories, I guess because there was the Poppy War and that did well and now it seems to have become yeah. like, more of a thing which I'm very happy about yeah they find one and they're like oh people do want to read something different which is great. <laughs> crazy yes, yes Bethany <laughs> um, I didn't I, love the poppy war but I okay I mean I well it's very like it's this is like grimdark military fantasy yeah, um really. which I love it I don't know that I would reread the series anytime soon because it's it's a lot yeah. but <laughs> it's very good I think um Anyway, so I, yeah, it's like you have to be in the right headspace for them. Yes. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, I think I kind of read from all different mythologies. Like I'm always like happy to find something new that I haven't Mm -hmm. read before. I've been starting to like, I I like that we're starting to get some like indigenous mythology. Like lots of ways. Great. Um, I need to buy that one. It's so pretty. Like it's a really nice book too. Like it just, it's like, I know Mara said that she was like the quality. The quality. No, it's it's true. I'm a smaller (laughs) publisher and it's like pretty. Anyway. No, that naked. Oh God. It's, it's it's the cart. (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah i mean like i like everything like i have i mean i kind of like was like well i've got like some asian and south asian and african and caribbean and like south american stuff and like i mean you know angela to your point right like because i have for uh, you're right for adult like i I, hopefully there would be more but we do have zarada cordova coming in with some adults (laughs) finally ecuadorian uh which i love and I love Sylvia Moreno Garcia, so like the Mexican stuff, and some of her stuff is fantasy. I liked her um, certain dark things, which is um, oh yeah, it's also in Mexico City, but that is more like I think near future fantasy with vampires, which I really liked. I like yeah, that one like more an, than God's like Game. a noir crime plus vampires kind of deal. It's not really crime. I mean, crime. I don't know. I don't know how to describe. For me, it was like Underworld, where it's like. <laughs> <laughs> normal dude has stumbles into a vampire and suddenly is in vampire shenanigans and there is a cop but it's just kind of there to like show you what's happening <laughs> i saw that i didn't know that had vampires maybe it I does didn't either oh it's like 100 percent vampires it's all vampires. Now i'm like it's i want to like, read that <laughs> yeah it's fun but it's like more vampires I, I just i like it she writes so many interesting things um i haven't gotten a lot of success with sylvia moreno garcia Myself. Don't give. I up. mean, if it helps, Jashana, I gave like Gods of yes. Jade and Shadow a three star, and Certain Dark Things was like a four for me. So like, I've also been like more miss with her. But I also did that one audiobook, which might have helped. I, don't know. I think she like she has a specific writing style, and I feel like a lot of people either love her or just feel middling about her. Like I love her books. Usually, her noir stuff is more like four stars for me. But all like. Um, the beautiful ones is one of my favorite things from her. I love it so much. <laughs> I do have it. <laughs> you do have it. <laughs> you know what? That this cover is so seem like it pretty. Would be a thing at all? I love it. It's yeah, so- I did. I didn't give very far. I didn't give it like much. It's of like, I mean, it's sort of. It's sort of like. Jane Austen plus the Bronte sisters with a tiny bit of speculative element. So it's like a like courtship of manners with some slightly darker themes and I love it like totally up my alley but like it's not gonna be for everyone <laughs> yeah Steph I, I want to hear your favorites yeah um I definitely lean towards um Middle East fantasy and like East Asian inspired fantasy but I'll read anything and just like Angela um, because I'm Argentinian I look for a lot of South American inspired fantasy but Yeah, I think uh, Soraida was like the closest I got to it where it felt like kind of coming home in that story. Have you Um, read this? Not yet. I know, I know. (laughs) (laughs) I'm waiting for the third book, especially with your review of the second one being a cliffhanger. I'm waiting for the third yeah. I know, that's why I have been like hesitant because I would like to just marathon the series yeah. and then like recently I read Upon a Burning Throne <laughs> and I loved it but the only problem I have with this series is that so it's inspired by the Mahabharata and so it's going to be like nine books long and each book in between doesn't follow the same characters so like this ends on a cliffhanger and you don't get answers in the second book because it follows uh, a story that's happening at the same time as this. Oh so I was like, yeah. Oh. Not, how many Maybe. books? I did not realize that. I own that book, but it's unread. Oh, I didn't realize it was going to be like nine books long. Yeah. And okay, have yeah. that sort of weird structure. Oh, no. I am now very interested. I was not before, but this whole like, <laughs> I have to go on this journey. You sold I'm ready. it. Yes. Yeah. No, it how was many are really out? Good. There's only two, two out. Ooh, I, I feel like maybe I'll wait till there's three. Yeah. Also, yeah. Steph, have you read this one? Because this one is like young adult, adult, and this one was good for me. This was had the exact amount of like Latin inspiration and influence that like I loved so much. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just read it like a couple months ago, and I was really surprised because I know that it's Marco Shiro's first fantasy. 
Mm -hmm. And so it was like, it's so beautifully written. So pretty. And like, it's such a beautiful book. Like I like the end papers, but Mm -hmm. also like the beginning of chapters have like desert scenes. Yeah. It's so pretty. I love the chapter. Is where's that set? You said South America or central? Well, it's hard. It's okay. It's p- fantasy dystopian future. Okay. <laughs> it's like central America. Yeah, I got central. I didn't know he had a fantasy book. So let me add that. Yeah, it was kind of a quieter release. I feel Mm -hmm. like it was. I saw it. I just assumed it was contemporary. That came out this year, twenty twenty last year, twenty twenty. Yeah, I didn't hear about that at all. Part of it is it's a young adult book because it is coming of age, but it's not action packed and it doesn't Mm -hmm. have any of the tropes for young adults. So it's really hard, I think, to market and find like an audience. That makes sense. I loved it so much. Let me put that on my list. <laughs> I just this is the book I scream about on my channel so much, just because mm-hmm. no one reads it. It has eight hundred reviews, okay? Like ratings, like not reviews, like yeah, ratings it's, on good. It's reviews. low. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess I mean we can just talk about ones that we love, or I know we have ones that are overlapping, but there's probably some different ones. I know Jashana, if you have. I feel like I, I'm guessing, like I have guesses in my mind, certain ones. <laughs> yeah, what's the first one Deshaun is going to bring up? I, well, I feel like I know, but let's see. What is I, it? My, I have my guess. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> well, there's two. I'm going to put it in a private chat. I'm gonna We're very different, up. though. <laughs> and Bethany will not like one. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> I love That's Ring Shout. I, <laughs> I know. I know you love this one. You did not love this one, but I did. I did not. That's okay. Yeah, I uh, gave this one five stars. Um, Which, for I, those who don't follow Jashana, those are very rare. Yeah, five stingier <laughs> than me. My first five star of the year. I mean, it's not European, but it's not even that deep. Fan- like, it's not very fantastical, and it's also based in the United States as far as the setting, but the character. Like, oh, oh yeah, I would call that fit. Yeah. Sure, kind of. Like, but she's American. She's an adoptee, so she's not like it's not in the. But there is a little bit of like Asian influence in the cultural stuff happening. Mm. Yes, and it's not very magical though, or fantastical. But I, this was my first five star of the year. But yeah, these two for sure, and like they're very different because this one's like horror, which I didn't think I would like honestly. But because it was a novella, (laughs) and I saw like Mara and Ashley both like, oh my god, (laughs) like I'll try it. And I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I freaking loved it. But yeah, then this one, African inspired. I think this one is what? Is this West African kind of inspired? I can't remember. Um, I think it is. But very fantastical world, though. But yeah, I just had a really good time. It was one where I had a lot of reads like this this year. Like this one was another one. I got all these sticks. Uh, (laughs) This one was another one that I didn't give this one five stars, but like both of these were, I was reading it and I was like, okay, I'm not mad at it. I'm not loving it. (laughs) (laughs) We all have like 20 books around. I know. Yeah. I mean, we're like, yes, we can talk about this. (laughs) We've got them all. But yeah, I, I like, I wasn't in love through most of the book but like by the end I was like okay yeah mm-hmm. mm-hmm. like this one I fantasy books I don't often have like quotes to save I have a quote journal where it's like beautiful quotes or like impactful quotes from books fantasy I don't find a crap ton <laughs> of them because I don't know lots of times it's just like we're doing stuff and like characters are growing but there's not a lot of like beautiful lines but I found quite a few in this that like I really towards the end was like oh yeah I love that. So Ooh, yeah. I don't know. I had a good time. Speaking of Kasha Suri, I haven't read the Jasmine Throne, her new release, but I did really like the um, books of Amber. Yeah. <laughs> I want to read that one. <laughs> I have one. Everyone, read that one. Jasmine Throne, everyone just. Oh you my know. God. I don't have one. Oh my God. I'm not in the club. Joe. Yes. <laughs> That's what you do. I don't know. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so sorry. I'm so um, embarrassed. So, so yeah. I mean, I really like this one, like the romance with the fantasy. Like it was very evenly split. I think I liked mm. the second book more because the second book is more like a companion with um, uh, her sister. So it was I think the opposite. I liked this one so much more. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
<laughs> um, but like, I like Indian mythology and just uh, yeah, the way that it the magic system is really interesting as well. Do you, um, Bethany? Have you read both? Do you have a preference over like the Jasmine Throne or Empire of Sand? I feel like they're different genres of fantasy. That's unfair. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> this one doesn't have. Me. A lot, like there's romance in it, but it's like not heavy at That's all. More yeah, of a they're, they're, they are very different. Like this is a because yeah, because this is definitely a romance, and I love yeah. the romance. Like it's okay. really, really good. Slow burn, friend, like for arranged marriage to friends to lovers. It's great. It's just it's so good. Oh my gosh. Uh, but yeah, Jasmine Throne is like one of my favorite books I've read this year, and it's amazing. This one, I think. Some people didn't like as much because they were expecting more of a heavy romance. And like, there's a romantic subplot, but this is much more about like politics and mythology. But this is oh, it's so good. I love Legends it. I being born. born. It's so epic. Hmm? I, I said, I was just saying, I think it's slower paced too, is I think what a lot yeah. of people struggled with. And I, I mean, I didn't struggle with that, but mm -hmm. I know, like, I noticed as I was reading it, like, okay. Yeah. yeah I, yeah, I mean, all of her books are slower paced, though, I feel like. So okay, I, see, I, I haven't read anything. Okay, yeah, all like all of her books are, are on the slower side. So I, I mean, I, I raced through this one, I think. Yeah. By the end, I was like, I was, I was definitely bought in. I was like, heck yeah. And I had <laughs> pre ordered it and I was like, am I going to keep it? I don't know. And then I, or no, I hadn't pre ordered What did I? Some of, I don't remember. I don't know my life. But at any rate, I was like, yeah, I'm going to keep <laughs> this and I can't wait for the next one now. Like, I'm, I am bought in. Can't wait. I also would say like the Jasmine Throne is like normal pacing for epic fantasy that it is. I just think it's because it's Tasha Sori or like a female author that people expect it to have like the similar pacing to a romance fantasy. Yeah, but it's yeah. like it has the similar beats and pacing of any like yeah. epic fantasy with a world that has trouble and like where there's politics and rebellion. Mm -hmm. Like I've read a lot of epic fantasy. It's like. It's, yeah. If people who read Way of on. Kings are then complaining about that being slow, I don't know what they're doing. Like, yeah, I'm like, like I, this is slow? <laughs> Come on. I say that as a strong, like, fan. I'm just saying some people are more patient when it's a dude yeah. writing 800 pages. Like, Factual. Yeah. You tell no yeah, lies. Absolutely. <laughs> I know if you're on TikTok, follow Tasha Suri because she's hilarious. And like, <laughs> yes. Fun. I'm not. Every day, but... I'm like, should I get a TikTok and make Nigel an account? And then I'm like, no. no. I mean, yes, yeah, maybe, possibly. <laughs> it's the way the world is going, you know. I know. I, I refuse. I'm old. It's fun. Well, yeah, I'm going to shout out a Caribbean um, fantasy because I feel like we yes. haven't talked about the Caribbean oh, yet. I haven't, yet. I haven't read that much. much. Redemption and Indigo by oh, Karen, Karen Lord. Lord. It's it. short. There's really no excuse, Jess. I, I'm short. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is even the UK cover, which I think you have easier access to. The US That's cover cute. is trash. Don't look at it. It's bad. It's really bad. Oh, now I gotta see. I, I know. Now I'm like, <laughs> let me get my phone. Look it up. <laughs> so this is a retelling of a Senegal folk tale, and it's very whimsical. And like, I will say, there's a tiny bit of like fat phobia that's in the original myth that does come through, um, which is one of the complaints I have seen from some people. But it's just like a farce folk tale retelling with like these trickster gods and this woman Pama who's just trying to do her thing she's just trying to cook for her family and she's given the chaos stick and now the lord of chaos is hunting her down and this whimsical story the u.s cover tell me what that's Dude, just like i just with saw it it's what awful is <laughs> it's it looks so... like a textbook yeah <laughs> Like a woman Why? study, like a well, this textbook. is like you've got like her and the god in the trees. Like it, there's all of this. It's all whimsical fairy tale. Oh, yeah, yeah that was in charge of that. That is a terrible <laughs> cover. Yeah. It looks like a textbook. Like yeah, it's Why? really really it's bad. <laughs> anyway, and this is one of the UK books that has like good binding. It's not like ooh, it's, it's, that's it's rare. Good. Sorry, Abby. <laughs> So I don't Go know. Also, it's all her Lord's just really funny. I just love her writing. She writes sci-fi and fantasy, and I just okay. I am intrigued. Cool. But yeah, okay. so I'm pretty sure, and she's um lives in Barbados, and she has a PhD and teaches like physics and stuff. She's a really cool author. To follow. Yeah, we love to cool. see it. Okay, I'm gonna. <laughs> it's actually available from my library, so I'm just gonna. Okay. 
it's pretty it's short so i already i borrowed it so. it took me like two days to read i like wasn't expecting it to because i saw the american cover so i was like oh i guess it's probably very reflective it's probably gonna take yeah. some time yeah. no <laughs> no okay so i have a caribbean fantasy romance that a lot of people don't like that i really like <laughs> so i'm gonna recommend <laughs> what one um it's given by nandy taylor I feel like that's got a lot of really like negative reviews, but I read it and I was like, I don't see why I really love it. It's got a <laughs> dragon shifter hero and uh, like, I like, I, I really liked it. It's a YA fantasy romance and um, I liked the main character. It's also like interesting because it's a book that's kind of about um, immigration and like dealing with being in a new mm -hmm. culture and having to adjust and like, sexism and racism and stuff but then also this like romantic plot um i think one thing a lot of people don't like is that the hero is like at the beginning tries to be more controlling because that's like what he thinks is normal for someone he's mated to and she's like uh no that's i <laughs> excuse me i have my own things to do but then by the end they end up like falling for each other people get annoyed really that there's like room it. for growth i don't understand i don't understand i like the growth arc i think there's a growth arc but apparently not everyone agrees so i'm gonna recommend that one <laughs> i guess it is quite like well known because it's got the third book coming out but um yes i love too. the green bones oh, yeah. does everyone have their copy of that i think we one? all yeah <laughs> everybody just I'm, like the odd one. One. I'm like the odd I'm one out who gave it three I'm stars the and didn't continue <laughs> finally in the golden <laughs> club Bethany. I, I know i'm the one out of this club i didn't i didn't love like it was fine but i just i'm not a big like mafia it was, it was more than fine <laughs> You're wrong, Betty. This got... is the most perfectly paced family drama I've ever read. Sorry, I gotta go. I only <laughs> like one of the character perspectives, and then I didn't like what they did with her by the end of it. So I was like, ah. Okay. Yeah, that's I mean, okay. that's fair. I am so excited for Jake to see. Like, I'm not. We have to have, like, yeah, a prepare your chat, like a therapy group, like, so we can just scream. Into I have to the, go like, through it by myself. Well, you chose well, I don't know to read an arc. That. You could have just waited. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. I got approved, and I was like, "I've oh got to read this." <laughs> I, it's, um, yeah, that book yeah. makes me question my taste in people because I I flip flop on whether I like or dislike a particular character like every other chapter. I'm like, "Oh, but you're so sweet." Oh, wait, you did that, and I just do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. They're complex. Exactly. Yeah. There are parts. I, layers. I think they're all people that I find very complex. I really like reading about them, but I wouldn't want to be friends with them. Oh yeah, no. Mm -hmm. They're not the people that I want to surround Ant -Man. myself like with. But if I was on their side, I mean, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> be helpful. I'd I marry one of them. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. If I was in this city, I would be more confident in the Mountain Clan, and I know that's blasphemous. But since I'm seeing behind the curtain, I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> they're a little messy i want no people they're a little messy Hilo by my side or in front of me <laughs> wherever somewhere by my person wait now i have to know Deshana, do you like Hilo? because this could explain the dara problem oh yeah Hilo's fine i like mm. Hilo. interesting they're not the same <laughs> they're not but what are at they? all bethany did you not like Hilo? Nope. She only liked Shay, and she didn't like what that happened with sense. the arc. I think that's what she said. I, I, I like Shay. Shay is my favorite. I look up to. Oh, her. you yeah. didn't. You yeah, didn't like she, was baby baby she, was she was the only Amanda character. Is so precious. Yeah. No, she was the only character I liked, but I didn't like where she where they took her character arc in book one, and I was like, I don't know, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> that's fair. I feel like I've seen a lot of people. Like I feel like I've seen people either love this yeah. or feel very like. Mm -hmm. no, no, no. Well, yeah. I think it's it's not the fastest of paced. Like it's got a weird pacing. So oh, when I finished, it, I was I don't I loved this, but I don't really know why I loved it so much. It's hard to like put a concrete like reasoning. Yeah. Of, I love this book because of X Y Z. It was just I really like the book. Yeah, and yeah, if you I don't feel... like the characters, it's kind of a hard sell. Yeah, I was gonna say it is following yeah, it's pretty much just with... like a family drama. Yeah, day to day yeah. stuff. So I was gonna well, say and like I'm like... also generally not a bit that into like mafia type yeah. stories, which that's mm -hmm. kind of what it is. So like yeah. I just it's one of those things where I was like I see why people like this. Yeah, I just I, mean, I gave I it love three the stars. I didn't, like I didn't hate that. it. I just was like eh, okay, that's not yeah. for me. Like, that's yeah. Fair. 
I feel like if you're generally like a plot person, you're probably gonna hate Jade the whole series. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jade War is even, you know, slower, but yeah. The emotions, fond of yeah. disrespect. Disrespect. I was like so anxious <laughs> messaging Jess, like, what part are you at? Because I was like, <laughs> Jashana, Jashana. I just remember Jashana's <laughs> tweets when she was reading Jade War for the first time, and it was an emotional ride. <laughs> I didn't I even know what was happening. You were just. You were just in that place when we Twitter. read Jade Legacy. Like Petrick was messaging me when he was reading Jade Legacy, and he was like, "Abby, this book I am destroyed." And I was like, "Oh no, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm ready and not ready." I'm not. I'm not. <sighs> I know when I saw Petrick tweet that it's like one of the best fantasy books he's ever read. I was like, "What? Oh God, <laughs> I don't think I'm ready. This no. is gonna be too much, too good, yeah. too overwhelming." Oh, I hope man. it's not one of those books where sometimes I get too involved in fictional characters where I like have to put a book down because I'm like, no, something, <laughs> I feel it, something neck bad is going to come. <laughs> Do not. But I, th I think that did happen to me at the end of Jade War. I was like, no, was no like, this cannot be happening. I need a pause. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> you know, if, I don't, like, <laughs> if I don't finish it, it can't happen. So <laughs> it can't hurt me. <laughs> it did. Oh, Fonda. Uh, That's going to be a fun, fun. Maybe fun. Seven hundred pages of fun. Yeah, one that <laughs> has all characters that are terrible, terrible people. That I don't know why I liked it. I didn't love, love this book, but I was like, Ooh. by the end of it, I was like, I think I liked this. I didn't love it, like, and it was super slow. <laughs> Steph and I did a book club for this, and I think that was our thoughts too. Yeah, they're all just awful people doing awful things for awful reasons but like hungry. it was interesting like <laughs> it was interesting you know i still I'm haven't happy gotten it's a duology so i only have to read one more book to get the yeah art. so that'll be nice yeah i'm mm -hmm. loving this duology <laughs> thing we've got going on in fantasy right more now duologies. i'm like yes duology oh. have you guys read this it's yeah. all yes. no I but i guess bullshit it. It's, it's so, so good. Funny. It's so I, I it. love the UK covers. You see the face. Like yeah, I don't think everyone knows this right away. Yeah. Um, yeah, the whole duology is so good. Book two is also fantastic, which I've been let down by a lot of YA second books. And so I they were both great. I have to read the second one still, but I wanted to love this so yes. much. I was waiting for it. As soon as I saw Jordan Afueco on Twitter one time. She tweeted out like uh, an image of some beautiful woman with like this beautiful crown and whatever, like just a model like yeah. dressed up. And she was like, and someone was like, someone write this book. And she was like, I did. And I was like, wait, what? And then she was describing <laughs> it and I was waiting and waiting. And I just didn't, I gave it 3.5. Like I liked it. What's the, but, where is it set it? or like inspired? It's, it's, so it's, African. it's African inspired yeah. um, YA fantasy, but it's like multi POV. It's got great, like, I mean, I, okay. Like this was one of my favorite books last year. I think it's amazing. Like one of the, for, I think one of the best YA fantasy series we've gotten in a while. Um, and it's like, got really interesting world building and twists and turns it's got great representation too like there's a character who's ace and there's like a character who's disabled and it's like woven in where it's like not <clears throat> it's not just like yeah it's not like just there to be there like it's it's like woven into who they are as people and i just so good oh my god i just saw the face in the cover yes <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But um, it's That's about, great. so it's, it follows this girl. Oh, it's like, it's like hard to explain because it's like complicated with like the politics stuff. But I can try and explain it. I haven't read it, but Ooh, I've seen people talk one. about it. Let's okay. I got it. Try to do it. Yeah. All right. So we got this girl and her mom pr makes her promise to do a thing and she doesn't really want to do this thing. And she ends up being really close to the dude in power to do this thing. She's and, well, you know, from the beginning, she's supposed to assassinate the crown okay. prince. Didn't know if no. that was the thing that was on the back of the book. No, it's, it's, yeah, it definitely <laughs> yeah, it's definitely is. Like, it's like, you know that from the get-go, yeah. And then you follow her dealing with that moral conundrum. Yeah. Ooh. But there's, like, magical things Stuff. involved, and it's so good. Are there animals involved? They're on the cover, so I... Yes, like... yes. Uh, yeah, there are. So also. is this, like, sub-Sahara, then, or something? Is that where lions are in Africa? Yeah, I mean, it's... Um, although it's kind like... of set... It's, like, African-inspired, mm. but it's also set in a world where there's all these different... 
uh, almost like an EU type structure where all of these different places that are all inspired by different cultures from around the world, like yeah. function under a single main ruler, but have their own separate rulers kind of thing. So, and so not necessarily a one region inspired. So. No. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So it's interesting. Well, another mm-hmm. African one, this is definitely, I think, Algeria inspired or Northern yes. African. Yeah. The Unbroken, I, read which I think one. I like this book the best of the people who have read it in this chat. Yeah. I, 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 I liked, liked it. it. But- I didn't. I DNF. I'm gonna it. read the next one. I know. I'm going to read the the next. I know one. you DNF'd it, Jashana. It's okay. <laughs> I didn't hate it. I wasn't like, oh, I can't even. I just was like, I don't <laughs> care. I just did not care. This anymore. is my favorite of the sapphic trifecta. Okay, we talked about the other two. This one's my favorite. <laughs> oh. Okay. I mean, my favorite is definitely the Jasmine Throne. So yeah, it's close. Yeah. It was close. I think the difference is that like. This book made me forget time was happening and the Jasmine Throne didn't quite do that. And when a book mm-hmm. can do that, it's like, that's just like the perfect reading experience, right? When you're yeah, just like yeah. so in it. Yeah. And I just love Terrain and her arms. And I love the jokes that uh, CL Clark has on Twitter about the sequel yeah. being Terrain's legs. Those are pretty, <laughs> those are pretty great. I am <laughs> excited about the sequel because of, you know, what happens at the end of the book. So I'm excited to see where that goes because I was mm-hmm. enjoying that one. Like the first half, I was really into it and flying it through. And then the pacing kind of slowed down for me, but I still, I think I gave it like a three or three and a half. So I'm, I'm encouraged. And I hope that the next one, I get like more of like the magic and stuff that I really want to see in the second one. Well, that's so. why I was surprised I liked it so much because I am typically the reader who's like, give me the magic. We're in fantasy. Yeah. If I wanted historical <laughs> fiction or alter, I there's a genre for that. I yes, want that magic. was my thing. I was like, no, I want it now. <laughs> but like, it's intriguing. I think it's just because I loved terrain. Like this was a purely like I loved terrain. I was intrigued by Luca. Like mm. liking Luca's a weird decision to make. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. She, she's yes. a little weird. And then like I do think the ending opens it up that like the magical stuff that's introduced, we're gonna explore it. Yeah. But I think because I just it's just so fascinating to have such a conflicted character, you know, to be brought back home after you've been like conflicted. assimilated into another culture and like mm-hmm. it I was, was conflicted with my feelings. <laughs> like the rain. Like I'm just the saying idea. this is my favorite. I mean, I love the Jasmine Throne. One I the <laughs> Jasmine Throne. Kingdom of Souls by Renna Barron. That's oh. on my TBR. I haven't read that one because I've heard Ooh, such mixed proper. things. Like people love it or don't. I don't know. I that one too. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I hate myself. I swear. I was that one. I didn't have to very early because I was like, for a dumb, like nonsensical reason, I was just like, Oh my God, I get it about like, there was something that was repeated over and over again. I can't remember. It's what like she doesn't, about- so you're following oh, a character um, who doesn't have magic and she wants to have magic. Oh, yeah, and- she doesn't have magic. Yeah, she's kept talking about how she doesn't have magic. I don't have magic. I want magic. I don't have magic. I was like, I don't care anymore. Oh my God. I mean, and I just knew I was like, I'm going to be so annoyed with this. I don't need to continue and just like hate this book. I mean, I mean, come on. If you're in a world surrounded by magic and you don't have it, you're like, I just don't want I to read about magic. someone talking about it. <laughs> and then it probably would have benefited from being maybe third person, or was it third person limited? Uh, I mean, it's no, YA. It's so I it's bet first it's first person. person. That's usually yeah, first, it's first person. person. Ah, there, there's the yeah. issue. Yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah. I couldn't deal. Yeah, you follow, really you follow cool. her as she, re- well, she doesn't have magic, but the world has a big evil and uh, she realizes this and she feels it, she takes it upon herself to try and combat it by getting magic through other means um which takes away the years of her life oh trading her life her her life for magic instead of the more normal way to have magic just interesting yeah is that going to be a duology or a trilogy because i know the second book's out but i didn't know if it was the end i think it's a trilogy i haven't read the second one i just saw the cover i don't know how long ago reveal for the third one okay my rule nice. with them, um, I don't do this with adult, but for young adult, because my memory is that of a goldfish, I try to binge those because then I like them more. <laughs> so yeah. kind of just wait. Read them I closer. relate to that. But I think, yeah. I mean, at least in the UK, this is sold as in the adult section, but it, I'd say it is more YA. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not sold in the adult YA. section here. Yeah. That's interesting. One I would like to enter that's, t- is it? Okay, I am not a genre <laughs> wizard. Just do okay. it. <laughs> I feel like it might touch. 
I think it's. I see what when you have. It's like it's SFF, right? Or I feel like it's like sci fantasy because it's like that's fine. I have a sci fantasy okay. dystopian. Yeah. So this is, I mean, based in North America. Uh, it's really set in Canada, but about it's the Marrow Thieves, um, yeah. which is about indigenous people in the story. <clears throat> this is like you know the world's gone to shit because climate change was a little too close to home. <laughs> but essentially, they're like hunting indigenous people for what they think is their marrow because it's like something like a condition that people can't dream anymore but indigenous people yeah. can dream so basically they're hunting them to take them to places that are almost like residential schools to kind of test on them to see like why aren't they affected and so this story is following it's like a group of people kind of on the run um yeah. but i read this one last month and it's definitely different like it doesn't have the typical I don't know all the words like exact beginning middle like structure of typical western writing so that could be kind of different um i know i read this with some people and they said like the audiobook was really good but it was who the it ending was a lot. Oh, i but got this read that one just so came bad. out like the second one yeah yeah and i'm like okay i need Wait, that because how there's a second there's, one i did not know yeah. this it I thought just it was came out. Long, so now I'm two two weeks ago, maybe. I don't even know. I think it came out like this last Tuesday. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, but no, yeah, emotions. Um. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's not like super fantasy heavy, but there's a little bit. So I wanted to end. Yeah. Well, speaking I of indigenous. Like yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm the odd one out. I, I, I uh, do own it, but it's unread, so I didn't like pick it out. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> it's on the shelves. So, That's fair. Can we... we need to like show people the inside okay. thing? Though, it's so this is the most stunning map I've yeah. ever seen. Yeah. I kept looking at it while because I was listening to the audio and I was like, oh, they're right here. Yes, they're right here. <laughs> is anybody else like not a fan of the cover for book two? Oh, oh my god. Hard. I'm, I'm really hoping a person for final judgment. And this is beautiful. What did they yeah. do? Like, I'm really is, hoping that in person perfection. it's just prettier in person. I, than, I, yeah. I mean, that was the main reason I bought this. It was on sale for like $13. And I was like, yeah. well, I only liked it. And I'm pretty sure I'll love the rest of the series. Oh. And the cover's so pretty. The maps. Yeah, yeah they, I don't know. Great. The second one is so disrespectful. <laughs> I know. Like, well, I mean, it's oh, probably the Rampa on the cover, which makes sense that I wouldn't be <laughs> on the cover. So yeah, like, but, but like, the cover, yeah, but the cover design is not great. Like, they could have done it something more, you know. Mm -hmm, I don't yeah. know. Like, oh, no, get it together. You know, I didn't for the third book. I, it's um, what's her I name? She, I can't remember how to say her name. The Shiala. The Shiala. Yeah, she'll be the third book then. Yeah, I love Shiala. Shiala and Serapio. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I love Shiala. Yes. <laughs> I didn't mind a world Rampa, though. chat about um, Black Sun for those who want I to hear people gushing. Yeah, I mean, I feel like by the end, I definitely liked Narampa because you got so much yeah. more of her story. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, you're becoming a really interesting character. She was really, yeah. like, she was real dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. It was the most so dumb and nice smart character I'd ever read. Yeah. So nice. <laughs> Where I was like, girl, oh, sweetie. Get it oh, together. He was really gullible for someone growing yeah. up on the streets. Like, I was just like, yeah. You know, I like how you said you, you like to delay reading YA series until they're all out. That's why I've delayed reading Black Sun, because I've heard about the ending. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah. I thought it was coming out this month for some reason. And then I went to look, and it's April. <laughs> <laughs> So, Abby, I was one of the first people to read it. Like, I read it early, so I didn't know that this... Usually, if there's a cliffhanger, I hold off. Yeah, I read it early, too. <laughs> like, I, no one had told me. Because yeah. yeah. I think the people who had read it had liked the ending, and I'm very much like, I need more than what just happened here. Oh, see, I liked the ending. I, thought I didn't mind it. It was rushed, where I was like, wait, oh, okay, all right. And, like, it wasn't even rushed. It was like we skipped over some stuff, where I was like... Oh, Considering we're just not gonna... how the pacing was for 80% of the book, the ending was very jarring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a little jarring for sure, but I didn't, I don't know, I didn't like dislike I didn't, it. I didn't mind it, like I guess to me it felt like a purposeful choice because the point was the clock was running down and it should yeah. be speeding up because like, I don't know, to me it felt like a like a, an intentional 
Ooh, yeah, I was definitely think about intentional. That, like, I just like. don't always agree with authors' decisions. <laughs> <Fair>. <laughs> I'm suspicious yeah. that we're gonna get like a flashback from a different That's what I want. perspective in the beginning of the second book. Yeah, I want the okay, second book to flush out the ending a little bit for me. I hope. Yeah, from, from that other person's perspective. <laughs> yeah, I think that'd be good. Hopefully. I have um an indie book on my list by a South Asian author. I don't, I don't know if we've talked about that, but this is, this is sci fantasy. If you're feeling Dune, but you don't want it to be the white boy version, the boy with fire. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like it is, it's, it's got prophecy, it's sci fantasy. So there's science and fantasy in this desert area, but it's actually like written by a Southeast Asian author. And it has, it's multi point of view. You have an actual point of view for a father figure. You have an empire daughter, you have a traitor like assassin character you're following there is um disability representation there is having mis mixed identity representation so if you are biracial in a country it has all of these things um and it's pretty short um i will say this is a book where you require the sequel which i don't have like the ending made me want it but i also it was the book where i was just like I really, really wanted to know what was happening every time I turned the page. And I like actually got an arc to read of this for a panel. And then I bought a copy. To have Ooh, on my shelf. Cool. So. so I have to hop off in a couple minutes for parent teacher conferences. So can I like quickly yes. like <laughs> recommend a couple of them? Oh, yes, yes. Um, okay. So for, I've got a couple of East Asian ones that I like. Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie mm -hmm. C. Dow is really good. It's like a YA dark retelling of Snow White, but it's the backstory of the evil queen, but set mm -hmm. in ancient China with magic. So it's like Chinese inspired. I love it. Like book two was good, but I didn't love it as much, but I love this. So if you like villain origin stories, this is, Check it's, it out. it's very, it, it, I thought it was very good. And then um, I've been reading this series. Uh, the yeah, they're fun. Oh, so, read it yet. Okay, so book one is a little slow. I think it really picks up in book two. The pacing's a little weird, but they came out in the 50s. This is like Chinese. It's like classic, kung, right? Classic, yeah, yeah. It's like classic Chinese kind of kung fu fantasy. <laughs> and um, it's like a big family saga, dr epic drama. There's a lot of like soapy stuff that happens, especially in book two, which is really fun. So I liked book one. I think I gave it like three stars because it had some pacing issues and stuff. But book two is really, really good. And um, nice. these have been fun. Also, I think uh, the translation of book two is also better. And a lot of people have said that. So I think part of it might be that they changed translators. Um, with I saw two. reviews talking about the translation of book one being like, eh. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I still think it's it's like worth reading and it introduces you to the story. So these are fun. I'm excited yeah. to get to that one. Thanks, guys. Sorry I have to go, but uh, Bye. Bye. fun. Bye. Be a responsible adult. Yeah. <laughs> Bless you. Bye. Um I, I mean, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 you go. You go. Uh, um, <laughs> I did have an indie one that's like it's fantasy, but it's more sci-fi, speculative fiction, and it's an indie author, and like it's the weirdest book I've ever read in my life, and it's Saltfish Girl. So like no one has ever heard of this book. I've only heard, seen like three people on BookTube ever read it, and it's like so it's actually based off Chinese mythology and how humans came to be. So like the beginning, the chapters go back and forth between two different characters. And so one of the characters is another iteration of the woman who basically created humanity. And then the second perspective is this girl who, for some reason, smells like Duran fruit. And it's really off-putting to everybody. And apparently this plays like a big role in the book because there are random people in the society who have these weird conditions where they smell like something or they do something. And uh, so this group of scientists are trying to experiment on them. And it's just, it gets super weird, but it's like <laughs> one of the coolest books I've ever read. So I, I recommend it if you like really weird speculative fiction that's kind of open-ended, but if you really think about it, it like comes together full circle, but 
it's just weird. <laughs> it sounds like something I mean. Well, I, for some reason, that was making me think of Vita Nostra. Which like, I did bring, because your Russia's not Europe, right? I had it over here, too, because I'm like, isn't it Asia? I'm I asked Ryan, oh and God. he told me it's not Europe, and he doesn't know geography, but... <laughs> <laughs> We're counting it. Yes, Vita it's Nostra. a translation, and it, Russian culture is not the same. Like, yeah, I feel like when we say like European, we're talking like fantasy. We're talking about like the medieval Britain, very yeah. German Britain, Ger yeah, that yeah. type of fantasy, very but, like yes. more common. Yeah. I'm just saying that's what I had on hand when she was talking about weird stuff because uh, yeah. weird, yes. <laughs> <laughs> open ended, so very odd. You see how this looks? This was my mind being like. Yeah, if you, know you want a book where you go on the same journey as the main character, this is the book. You want to feel as confused as the main character and like as like what's happening to my brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm all set. Yeah. Oh yeah, Jashana, you would DNF this in like 20 pages. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> no, this is not for you. <laughs> I, I feel like I don't know how many people this. this is for, but I don't know. Yeah. I feel like wow. I, I haven't read it, but I feel like I saw they have like 70 books published in Russian or Ukrainian or so this is part of a trilogy that are three companion novels and they're actually they did write because this this is the only one translated to English mm -hmm. this did so well I was told by a subscriber that they wrote um, a sequel to this that is being translated by the same translator oh. which I follow <laughs> the translator on Twitter so I'm like the translator did, another, like they definitely amazing. have another book because I've seen another of their books in the yeah, translator books. themselves has their own book oh interesting they have the like that's the by the translator, not by the other authors, I think, right? Or is that no? This one? is by them, and it's translated. Oh, okay, because I know she also has. So this that was is a back my standalone, and I haven't read this one yet. Um, this works as a standalone too. It's just bizarre. Yeah. I mean, I want more, but you, it, you know, it kind of wraps. It's like it kind of wraps. Huh? If you, you like existential it? crises, commentary on education, and your place in the universe, and how the universe works, and then you're gonna have a crisis. <laughs> <with this. laughs> It's dark mm. academia at its weirdest. Oh, uh, see, <laughs> all is the pinnacle. Nothing dark. about this <laughs> sounds appealing to me. Well, it's dark academia. Then. No, Ugh. get out of here. <laughs> so good. I was like, good. I was like, I was. I Googling thought it counted, Russia. but I wasn't sure. <laughs> I think it counts. I think it counts. I had a couple um, indie ones from the same ooh. author, uh, Antoine Bondelet. So these two are adult. Oh, geez, whoops. Uh, the Kishi, which is just the weirdest cover. But it's like creature. It's like a West African mythology inspired, and these are like shape shifting creatures. So oh. that's like are they like the hyena? Because that's in that folklore, right? Or yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm and gonna add this one. And they're in the same world, like they're in the same like larger world of Esawan. And this one though is clearly like kind of like pirates in the sky. It's like sky pirates, but fantasy. Um, and are pirates ever not fantasy? I well, guess in real world, yeah, but that's pirates. boring. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the captain now. Um, but the one I really liked the most was this, actually, it's like young adult middle grade one. Um, it's the start of a new series. And it's, again, like West African mythology inspired. But it's very much like a Percy Jackson-esque thing. Like this kid who's in a magical family and he goes to camp. And it's like a magical camp for these kids. And then there's also sort of like Harry Potter-ish elements where there's like the non-magical people. There's like a name for them. And there's like family lineages of like the very, you know, astute magical families. And there's different schools around the globe. And there's different like magical mythologies and lore of the different places, the different cultures. But we're following a kid who's from like the kind of West African culture. And it was just so much fun. I don't, like, you guys know, if you watch my channel, I don't read a lot of middle grade at all, ever. And, and <laughs> lately, I don't even read a lot of young adult. And this is, like, early young adult, late middle grade, kind of. And I just, it was so much fun. I just loved it. It was so and much That's fun. what I love about, like, middle grade. Yeah. I'm just like a you good just, little Yeah. Well, speaking of middle grade. grade. This is da, da, da. this uh, is my favorite by Uncle Rick that I've read so far, um, but it's the Cain Chronicles. So this is a trilogy, and it's Egyptian mythology, which Ooh. I just need okay. more. I have a question. Yeah, I do. books. Do you have to have read? That's what I was because because I started reading Percy Jackson a few mm -hmm. years back, but I'm like I feel like I'm just 
Percy people Jackson get into it. I don't yeah. care. Twas not for me. Jackson. I think they maybe he maybe mentioned random, but you don't need to read at okay. least for this one. You don't need to read the other ones. Because then there's stands. the what's the other one? Because he has like Magnus Chase. I think yeah. like some of them are more like directly related. But also, it's middle grade and his writing style. He always tells you what you need to know, even if you hadn't read the other yeah. books. It's very yeah, like, like belled up. up for you. Yeah, you're not gonna be confused. Yeah, I've but heard about one? that one. And I, I think like, it's been adapted like, too, and I, I love this one. Uh, there's like two siblings, but they didn't grow up together, and so their <laughs> banter is so good because they <laughs> just give each other crap back and forth, and they like end up summoning something like from Egyptian mythology in like the uh, I think it's the British Museum in in London, and something happens to their dad, and they have to like go on these adventures, but they end up going to like the underworld, and I mm -hmm. love. Ease. So yeah, <laughs> just a trilogy. Don't have to read Percy Jackson. You know, yeah, like Mara has been enjoying them, but I tried to read yeah. them in my adult years and I was like, oh. Yeah. I have to like yeah. read one every six months because they're a little formulaic for me. But yeah. well, that's what it's that's fine. It's what it's meant to be. Like, yeah, I'm not I'm mad at it. My yeah. Egyptian one is uh The Killing oh, of oh, Jemison. I didn't even I think about that. that. I have read that and this I love it. This is the book. only Jemison book that she actually like had inspired by yeah. a world. Everything else is just like a culture mishmash. I yeah. completely yeah. forgot. Yeah. Yeah, but this is one is the duology? Yeah. yeah. The dream a dream blood duology. But honestly, they're basically except for her Broken Earth trilogy, her series are very much like the books are like 10, 15 years apart. Yeah. It's like different characters, like the world is consistent and yeah. the geopolitical consequences are consistent, but like you can't read the shadowed sun before the killing moon, but it's not like you follow the same people. Yeah, it's different characters in the second one. Yeah, which yeah. I like the second one more. And this one is actually the first book Jemison ever wrote. It's not the first published. And you can kind of tell a little bit. Oh. Like if there is a weak Jemison in my book, it's this one. But the world is so cool. And this is actually a great entry point for Jemison for people who are used to like political mystery fantasy and they're like, I, I, this is normally the type of fantasy I like. This is not as weird as some of her other stuff. It's a little more straightforward, <laughs> yeah. linear plot. Maybe I should have, uh, uh, yes. Jumping into the fifth season. I mean, I loved it, but I was like, oh. It's a lot but, and as knowledge. Jashana always talks about, and like, it's a, it's a valid complaint, but it's not a complaint for me, is that she doesn't info dump a lot. So there's a lot of stuff in the world that yeah. a character knows and won't explain to you. And there is a glossary, and you can look things up in the glossary. But um, if Justana said she always thought it would be special, right? Like you'd see a word and you didn't know what it meant. So you thought it would be like a plot point and it yeah. usually wasn't. It was just like, <laughs> yeah, a thing in the world. Like, <laughs> it, it, like, think, like I would be led to believe like, oh, this is like a really important thing that like foreshadowing. Oh my God. And then like, no, it was it just was, a word you didn't know. <laughs> it was just mysterious. And it ends up for me feeling like it's just being like mysterious and vague for the sake of being mysterious and vague is like how it reads to me. Where I get like annoyed, like, okay, I get it. You're so mysterious. <laughs> I just get annoyed. I mean, I'm not saying she's she's not actually because she gives you the definitions in the back of the I book. I know, but the way it's written in the book, like I'm trying to just like read the book and like get what the book is giving me, right? But yeah, I, I have to I think it's just her writing style doesn't work for me. Like the way she writes things feels I, I always say it just feels tedious. Oh, I disagree with that adjective, but I will say she has a strong voice and it's consistent throughout her works. Yeah. So if you don't like that it's voice, distinct. if you don't like how she talks to you, like reading it, reading it feels like a tedious chore to me. That's no. what I mean. By like <laughs> I know. Like, you were incorrect. You That's how it feels to me, where I'm like, I mean, it's subjective. I'm not actually saying Deshaun is wrong, but I can't relate to this. I'm like the polar opposite of that yeah. scale, where like most like of the time it, it takes me so long to get into a book and read it straight for like an hour. I'm like the type of reader who reads for like 15 minutes at a time. Me too. Sit down for hours with Jemison and listen oh. to her talk to me. And Robin Miles does all the narration. And Robin Miles is my favorite narrator. That's good. She's great. I, I did raise it up briefly earlier, but <laughs> Egyptian mythology, the city of brass. <laughs> well, yeah. and so it's in Cairo for like a second, but then doesn't it go Ooh. actually further east? Yeah, I think it does. Yeah, it's, it's it doesn't like really like talk about where exactly it is, where it goes more. I'm this assuming for like yeah, yeah, Syria and. Well, I, I yeah, mean, I've always it's been like, curious like, where the, um, which, which country the 
because I actually I was reading something else and I didn't realize. So in this book, there's an artifact that everyone cares about. That's like pseudomon. Su- pseudomon name, seal. Right? Mm-hmm. When I didn't realize that's actually like a part of like mythology other places till I read A Master of Jinn. Which is no, awesome. me neither. So I, I, I had the same I thing. Didn't know that. Master of Jinn. I was like, oh, this is actually like a thing a that's really consistent part of the lore of this region. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that either. I have not. Uh, read I didn't even put that together. I, I read Master of Jinn and I didn't like. <laughs> It was like the same, yeah. It's, it's, I want more gin stories, like in general. But, but I guess again, I'm maybe if you don't easy. love the characters in this, you might not love it. I don't like, know. Just Donna didn't like a third hey, of them, and she was okay. I hated, hated with the fire of a thousand freaking suns. Yeah, we know. Can me, I, still can like I mute you? Can I mute just Shauna? No. <laughs> I think just. I think you need to talk to someone about why you love him. No, it's not just me, Jashana. It's It's not not just me. I mean, I think Jashana, people are allowed to, you know, have fantasies about people who in real life would be trash. I I think also it's like a personal experience has colored because I've had like real life experiences with men like that where like just I won't get into it where I was reading. You ain't never met a Zara. It's too real. girl. You ain't never met a Zara Yashi girl. I have. <laughs> they are not fun in real life. Uh, this just but, reminds me of how like my friends always ship um, Zuko and um, Katara in, in Last av- Avatar. And I'm always just like, stop it. It would be so unhealthy. Stop it. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Steph said, you? what? I still love the series. <laughs> I know it's a popular ship, but my friends all get mad at me when I'm just like, couldn't she have been single? (laughs) Is that not a possibility? Okay. Too funny. But yeah, I would have rated the books. I probably would have given all three of them five stars had it not been for that character. Uh, Mm. But I still gave them all at least 4.25 and above. Well, that's that's still very high then. Yeah. I just love the political intrigue. I love the world. I love the characters. I love the writing. I just need more essay Shack Reporty. Like, I know. I'm ready for her pirate book. Coming out with more stuff. Next year. I think. Is it pirates? I feel like it's pirates. I mean, she just gave us a book last year. Give her a year, man. A pandemic just got to get her get out. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if it's 2022 or 2023, but she does have something a different series. I think she has like the short story anthology thing that's coming out with this. Mm-hmm. And I know she's been working on that like pirate book. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me grab that. So, yeah, read I mean, it. Probably has stories about Dara in it. <laughs> she likes Dara I'll more than Gimdo. <laughs> He's important, okay. This one's different, but it's by P. Jelly Clark, which is Black God's Drum. I haven't read that one yet. But hey, I want that's, to. Read, yeah. that's in New Orleans, right? Yeah. I mean, it's technically like obviously in the US, but the mythology is African mythology. Yeah. So it's really cool to read about. And there's Sky Pirates. Nice. I think yeah, I want to read that one because with with him, I'm very curious. I'm gonna continue with Master of Jin that series, like the novels. But that first novel, I was like, it feels like this is the first full length novel you've written, and yeah. all of his like short stories and novellas I've read thoroughly enjoyed. Yeah, and I want to read that one too. I haven't gotten to it yet, but uh, that Master of Jin, I was like, I liked it, but I was like, I didn't. I thought I was gonna love it. Like I yeah. thought this was gonna I be like my Master favorite. I think Master of Jin's thing. like better when you think of it as like mystery genre fiction than as fantasy, because it yeah, really it follows like the a detective, detective storyline. Really true. It. Yeah, I was just annoyed. I was just annoyed with the one character who's like so smart and then not <laughs> figuring this thing out. And I was like, it's so freaking. It's obvious. so there. Like, oh it's, my god. Like, and not even <laughs> because I'm the reader and I have information that you don't have. Like, I have. This, the same inf- the information you have, you should be able to figure this out. So I was just kind of annoyed, like, oh, you're so smart and clever and the best ever, but you're not. Like, okay. And I felt like it had some pacing issues for me. That's what I've heard I think- overall about mm-hmm. it. Yeah. But I'm very, like, I want to continue because I love that world. And oh, I do, I love the characters so much. They're so Yeah. Great. That's what uh-huh. I wanted. Like, I just wanted a not mystery plot arc with those characters. Like, I just, I'm, I don't, I, I get it. She's a detective, I, I guess, but like, do something <laughs> I else. Guess. <laughs> have a career change. God. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. Okay, the thing she missed for those who have read the books is inexcusable. Yeah, like, very, very inexcusable. I have not. 
I just went to look at S.A. Chakravorty. So the Devabod stories are coming out in March, the short stories. And then it says untitled February 18th, 2022 for the new one. So I don't know. If it's you know, untitled, it's, it's not coming out in February. Yeah, I'm yeah like, I was going to say, uh, <laughs> I know how she would was... you check Amazon from when the third name of the wind book's coming out? I'm sure that's like August of 2022. It oh my God. They just it. push it back every year. The same with Winds of Winter. I'm like, it's not coming out. <laughs> Can y'all stop doing this? <laughs> I know. I just stopped with uh, the Game of Thrones stuff. Stop I was like, I'm just going to stop. I mean, happen. I want it to come out, but every year, like on top anticipated releases, it's always on there. That and like the name of the wind book. I'm like, why? Why do y'all do this to yourself? I will put that on an anticipated releases video when I can anticipate it. <laughs> it's yeah, not so much. A song of ice and fire. When not there's my a thing. physical, I want to see a physical copy of that book and then I will believe. It it's not. It's not. It's not as bad though as I pre-ordered a thriller book by Terry Hayes. He's got one book out called I Am Pilgrim. Pre-ordered it for my boyfriend because he loves that book. And the week before it was due to come out, they postponed it. <laughs> and I was what? like, "What?" <laughs> what? <laughs> I was I like, "This is going to be his birthday present." Or like one of them. I was like, "Okay, maybe not." <laughs> uh, well, a book I have back back. I guess to the theme of the video, I have Folklore, which is Korean. Oh, nice. And it's folklore. Um, mm. Yeah, folklore. It's Korean um, mythology and folk tales based. It doesn't take place in Korea. It takes place in Sweden, Antarctica, and parts of the United States. But and the main Antarctica. character is first generation Korean American physicist. Yeah. Has a lot of conflicted experiences with her family, as is the case of being an immigrant from another country in America. Especially when you're Asian American, when like Asians have been in America since like you know like the 1800s and things like that. <laughs> But um, I really liked it, but it's um, definitely slow paced. I would consider this more like a contemporary book, like with magical realism elements. Mm -hmm. um, it, like I read it more like I read literary fiction than how I read fantasy. Like that's the part of my reading brain I had prepared mm -hmm. for it. I don't know if you guys do that when you switch to genres. You're like, I have a different like expectation for how this is going to go. Yeah, yeah I, I feel like what happens. But this is solidly is so shelved important. in fantasy. So. When things are like, sold as something or marketed as something I go you go into like I'm like all right, all right I'm ready for this romance and then it's like feels heavier or something like I think I always do that and then when it ends up being different it could sometimes hinder or sometimes it's like oh this is a pleasant surprise that mm -hmm. it's different and then sometimes like no I didn't want this <laughs> yeah. well and then sometimes I just get annoyed when like some things that are obviously fantasy but they're highbrow so they're put into like general fiction like Mm -hmm. Erin Morgenstern should be in the fantasy section of my mm -hmm. bookstore. Is she? Mm -hmm. No. No. But I'm like, weird. The Star of Sea is a it. fantasy book. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> I don't like it that much, but it's a fantasy book. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, uh, haven't gotten to that one. No. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. Do it, do it, do it. I need to read it. Oh, I want to read, <laughs> read that. I'm not sure what the... Is it Malaysia? Is it Indonesia? It's some... It's, yeah. It's just like the islands... Area. Islands, yeah. I can never say the word archipelago. I can't um, say it. That, that word. Yeah, I don't think it's Malaysian. You did better than I would. <laughs> archipelago, is that how you say it? Yeah, it's there you are. Sure. Archipelago. Yeah. yeah, so um, <laughs> it, it's on those sorts of islands and you have multiple perspectives. What I found, I liked it, but it was weird, was that some of the perspectives are in third person and some of them are in first person. Yeah. Um, so you're reading a chapter and I was like, oh, first person. Okay. And then you get to the next, the next chapter. I was like, oh, third person. Okay. Um, I am, I'm such a bad reader. I never notice when these things change. Whenever I go to book club and they're like, what did you guys think of the chapter that was in second person? I'm like, that happened. <laughs> it changed. I thought it was quite obvious for some reason for me, but, um, yeah. but no, I'm, is I'm just bad at that. I saw I just, a picture on Twitter of the second one's coming out. Is it a duology or is it like, it's a, it's a trilogy but it was so good and i like the um, one of the characters is the daughter of the emperor and she's uh, lost loads of her memories so she only has memories for the past five years or something um and her father the emperor isn't refusing to give her like any power until she regains her memories and it's set in this world where there are like constructs all these sort of animal like creatures that are powered by different bones from different people so everyone has to donate a bit of bone from like the back of their ear and those Ooh. bones like 
I don't know, these animal constructs feed off those bones. It, yeah, it's so the people you're, you're die. You're taking time bomb of like an energy source. Yeah, it's yeah, because the people they don't know if their bones are being used or not, so they have no idea if they're going to be dead within like a couple of days or if they'll live out their entire life. Oh, interesting. It, yeah, like it feeds from that person. Oh my god, oh. there's an oh, animal god. companion though. Oh, oh there there is. Is. Yeah. Yeah. drawings of it, so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, can you just like hold up and talk about the sword of Kaigan? I don't have a copy. No. <laughs> oh, it's right here. Yes, I can. <laughs> or can I? <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Asian inspired. Is this partic is this Japan? I think it's Japanese. Or is it, just, is it yeah. Japanese? I think yeah. it's Japanese. And um self-published standalone. <laughs> And I think, would you call it like elemental magic? Kind of like, yeah, there's yeah, definitely, never, there's, we have air, fire, and water. Yeah. So, mm, martial arts, the family, it's just so, it's just so good. The battle scenes in this, I just, the visual, the visualization, the characters, <laughs> the way she just rips your heart out of your chest. <laughs> Exquisite. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad I had you talk about it instead of me. This is pretty great. <laughs> I, yeah, I had heard people talk about this for so long, and then for some, I was reading it on my Kindle uh, before I had a copy, and I didn't realize it was this thick. And and but wow, the emotions. I mean, I think if you don't, again, this is another one. If you don't connect to the characters, you may not enjoy this one as much, um, since there is. It is basically following like one family, but oh, she like tricked me into liking a character I hate for like seventy five percent of that book. Oh I'm no, like, I still hate that character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. I mean, I am not forgiving that character. No way. A that little was less. Book. But it was. It was great. The I, yeah. This... For me, I feel I feel like it's slightly weirdly paced or structured. I mean, perfectly I paced. See <laughs> i i mean she threw me because i was like we are not doing this right here <sighs> fine jashana sorry i didn't go want to, to work. work i, I thought you were gonna do the wrath and the dawn first that's what i was thinking you were gonna do first oh no do you want to share yeah. them very quickly uh, i mean sure i guess i can real quick i didn't i was trying not to interrupt god <laughs> Well, then you were just going to disappear. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, okay. I got to go. But uh, yeah, the only other ones I had were the Wrath and Dawn duology, which I love. I know a lot of people don't. It's like I like that one. Toxic romance, whatever. I don't care. I love it. I was like obsessed the first time I read this. I was like, I love, I and I still love Shazi. The main character is like one of my favorite main mm. characters ever. I will die for her. I love her. <laughs> and then... David Mogo God Hunter. I want to uh, read that. I do which, too. Yeah, it's by Sui Davis Okungbawa. And this was the first, well, it wasn't the first thing I read. The first thing I read by him was a short story in an anthology, but or this one, I didn't Ooh. like give it five stars, but it was three. And I just, I, I read it and I was like, I know he's coming out with like a, a new series and I'm very excited for it. So, which is Son of the Storm. And I love, and then this one, I, this is the only one I've read from this so far. But I really liked it. And it's very, it's like different from what I normally would like. I would I didn't say it's sci-fi. Sci -fi, but <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's sci-fi and whatever. But like, yeah, I gave it four stars. And I'm, I have the other one. I love these new time. covers. They're, yeah. they're, 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 they're much working. better than the original. That, that's for sure. Yes, definitely. And then I did have this one, but it's like Greek mythology inspired. And it's like a totally made up world, but like with, greek mythology like characters and people and like their powers and it's a romance fantasy romance thing these are the uk covers they're coming out with new u.s covers the original u.s covers are not that great but um <laughs> yeah it's and i didn't like the third book in the series i um, unhauled it <laughs> I, kept the first two. I was like i'll reread the haul like the situation is so weird to me like why my completionist brain cannot do what you do on yeah. the regular I know. I just unhauled uh, a Accord of Wings and Ruin too, but I kept the first two. 
I only only own the second book. That's so funny because I only have the second one too, and I call it the best standalone around. Yes, it is (laughs) the greatest YA standalone. Yeah. Yes. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah, those are the only ones joining us. (laughs) Bye. 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 Okay, I'm just gonna go back really quickly and say, please read this. Steph, have you read it? No, I have it. I know I really want to read it. I wanted to read it this year, but I've been in a weird fantasy slump, I feel like. Yeah, I was yeah. for a lot of this year because like I read this and then I immediately I everyone was talking about Jade City and I was like, no, nah, I don't want to read it. And yeah, then I, everyone just kept talking. I was like, no, nah, I don't want. Mm-mm. And then I read this and I'm like, hold up, wait. Maybe I do. <laughs> and then I went to Jade City in my life. You actually but I thought in your vlog you read Black Sun the same time as that one. Yeah, but I'm saying I read this and then okay. I wanted more Asian inspired. Got it, got it, got it. And so then I read uh, Jade City. So yeah, but I read this and, and Black Sun together. But yeah, I, Mamoru, I just. Okay. There's some great characters. I mean, yeah. it is like, it has, it, the falling action is a third of the book, which is not a traditional choice, but it's mm-hmm. my favorite choice. That That's I, the thing that I think Abby's most referring to is that it does climax at like the yeah. five percent mark. Yeah, I know. I was like, "We're not, we're not right now." <laughs> my Kindle says time, we are only at favorite decisions someone's ever committed to. I was just like the yeah. commitment. I'm excited. It's more I'm- like there were just some character choices that annoyed me. Well, also uh, we if we but I think they were very that, personal, I need more so. people to complain about the third Lord of the Ring book because the second half of that is like some weird pacing stuff. For the I haven't gotten to game. that book yet. I was going to say, you're never going to hear me complain about it because I'm <laughs> never going to read Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I've only gotten through The Fellowship of the Ring and The Hobbit, but I'm like, ooh. Yeah. I read it once because I was dating someone who I thought was going to be like my life partner. I was like, it's their favorite series. I'll be nice. I'll read oh, it. And oh. now I'm not with them and I read them and they're fine. <laughs> 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 they're well, fine i give them like three three and a half stars they're fine anyway yeah. oh Angela coming in there with the hot takes at the end <laughs> and, okay i have not liked reading about what is in that book since before i even read it like i don't like any of the tropes in it and i know he's the no. first person to do those tropes but i never liked those tropes so it's just like do you like what am i movies? gonna do huh do you like the movies they're pretty i wish i loved them as much as everyone else but they're pretty Okay. You don't like Dune because, and you like a Dune's not action packed. Like, yeah, it's not action packed. What did you want the movie to do? Yeah, no, no. But I, I mean, the books of Lord of the Rings. Well, I just read Fellowship of the Ring, and I was like, all right, can we get past Tom Bombadil? As many of us complain <laughs> about. But I really love the movies. I think because of the characters and they're beautiful. But I mean, I like Dune. Um, I just wanted them. I thought they would change more in the movie. I but. think the second part's going to be where all the changes, because there's no words for them. They're going yeah. to write a script. Like, yeah, and they're like, you know, they've been hyping up or showing Zendaya and all the marketing. Yeah, she's, she's going to really be the main like... point of view for that. So <laughs> Chaney doesn't talk a lot and do. Yeah, no. <laughs> they're going to have to find some words. <laughs> Very intrigued about that second part. Yeah. But have y'all read this? I'm reading it right now. Like, not even kidding, the 40% of the way through right now. No. So, it, okay. it's uh, How are you liking it? Oh, so what's weird is, so I accidentally read their short story in Mythic Dream the same day I started Black Tides. And I liked mm-hmm. their, they have a short story called The Bridge of Crows. Mm-hmm. So I really liked that. I am really intrigued by this first novella. And I know all the novellas are like different formats and angles and perspectives on the story. So this one might not be like my favorite of the angles, but I'm intrigued. Yeah, I was going to say, because so this is technically a novella. It looks much larger than a novella, but it's a novella um, and it's one of four. But I think I just recently heard that they're going to add on some more. But the first two novellas follow these twins who they were given up to the monastery by their mother, who's like the protector. And um, they were given up to the monastery but one of the twins develops this power. And so the mother wants the children back, but one of the twins is like, no, and just <laughs> gets out of there. <laughs> yeah, no, it, this mother's a piece of work. That's all yeah. I know. There's, there's, there's cool magic. Gender yeah. identity is yeah. very involved. 
and this mother's a piece of work. (laughs) Yeah, so like when the children are born in this society, because the author is from Singapore, so I do think that this is heavily inspired by Singapore and Malaysia, but um, when children are born, they're not given a gender identity, so they can choose at a certain age if they want a gender identity, which I think is really a cool aspect that you don't often see in fantasy. And um, I read the first two novellas back to back, and I highly recommend that because the two stories really go hand in hand, whereas the other two novellas follow completely different characters. They have a bind up of all four at the store now, so I'm yeah. disappointed by it. It stares at me. But no, I'm enjoying it so far. And like, I guess this mythic dream is a whole bunch of retellings of myths around the world. There are some Greek myths. <laughs> I love how you said that. Mythic dream. <laughs> Around the world, <laughs> it has Rebecca Roan horse. It's got a whole bunch of people. It's got um, it has a bunch of authors I really like. I've only read the first couple, um, but but a whole bunch of different. Like, there's only a few that I recognize. Like, there's one for Hercules, which I did like, but that's the only one that like is like solidly Greek. There's a couple others, but a lot of them are all over the place. Like the Bridge of Crows that I mentioned is um, the original myth is called the Cowherd and the Weaver Girl. Okay, um, and yeah, based that's... off. I forget. There's actually author notes at the end of each of them. So that's a Japanese one. That's what they said. So, and what's interesting is I didn't actually know it was the same author because their author name in here is J.Y. Yang, but it's the same as Neon Yang. Oh, okay. So I guess they have multiple pen names for things. Trying to be sneaky. I love it. I have so many things I need to read. Yeah. (laughs) I feel like I've actually run through most of my stack, which is quite impressive. I, well, you said in the chat that you wanted me to talk about We Hunt the Flame, Ooh. which I no almost... No one else likes it as much as me and you, and that's really <laughs> quite a crime. I haven't read it yet. I'm sorry. I, I'm I curious if you like it, because I feel like you also get invested in characters, so mm-hmm. that's why I think that you have a good chance of liking this, because this is a very character-driven story rather than the action. Yeah. So like a lot of people hate it because the pacing is really slow in the first book, and then the action picks up in the last like 20%. And then the second book is really fast paced in comparison. But like, if you enjoy the characters, I feel like you're going to love the worlds and everything that's happening. But if you don't, then you're not going to like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it like, I remember people talking about how slow paced the beginning was. And I was like, I flew through those first 200 pages. I was just like, oof. But yeah, again, they was- were a lot of quiet moments. I was getting to know Zafira and her family and her friends and... It's just a oh, duology that- for this yeah. one. Mm-hmm. And it's finished. Yeah. And the audiobook is good. I mean, mm. I like the second audiobook more than the first. They're the same narrators, but um you can tell that there were major edits done after the first audio narrator narrated it, and I noticed yeah. it, and it yeah. could not like I don't want to <laughs> tell you because I don't want to ruin your life, but it's like a major change, and I was upset. <laughs> well, yeah, the the narrator ruins how she says names. Oh, she's saying you know, names wrong. It. Yeah, mm-hmm. I wouldn't yeah, just read it. it. Yeah, the second, I... I liked it. My problem was is the female narrator I didn't like at all, but the male narrator for um oh Nasir is that his name? Yeah, I loved his. Hmm. Well, yeah, good voice for Altair. A, a bad uh, an audio narrator can ruin, make or break. Yeah, yeah. Like, I physically oh, read no. We Hunt the Flames and then I reread it as audio and then I listened to We Free the Stars. That yeah, she's order. better in We Free the Stars. Yeah, that's so interesting because you know, there's been lots of stuff um, that's happened, like drama and stuff. And I've said before, like, y'all gonna stop coming for half, so I haven't even read the books, but y'all, I need to second B team. Yeah, I, I really because I still want to w- read those, but then also A Tempest of Tea, the new yeah. one, mm-hmm. where I'm like really intrigued yeah. about that one too so i'm gonna have to i mean i think also another thing for we hunt the flames that i it just i think it depends on if it's your trope candy because it's a young adult book with tropes mm-hmm. like i don't think it's, yeah. it's not trying to be different or it's not like when i showed um each of us a desert where i'm like this is like no other young adult i've ever yeah. read you know it's like structurally narratively yeah very different because i 
I know a lot of people hate this book. I I know, but I love this book and it's Ember in the Ashes. You can see oh, with I, it. <laughs> I compare the I I recommend these in this tandem. This makes me very excited because I haven't yeah. picked Ember in the Ashes up yet, but Do, well, if you don't like the narrators, it's the exact same narrator. Well, I can for just Ember. read it with my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> you see, that's the bizarre thing. I gave five stars to Ember in the Ashes and I DNF'd We Hunt the Flame. Okay, yeah. It's just like they have similar tropes and uh, but I think Ember has a lot more action and mm -hmm. politics, whereas We Free or We Hunt the Flame, I don't feel like has as much politics in it as Ember. But also, this is like a quartet, so there's a lot more. Have happening. you finished? Yeah. Were you satisfied with the ending? I was. I don't think that it's like the perfect ending to a series, but you know, she gave she gave some stuff to the readers that she didn't have to, and that I wasn't <laughs> expecting her to do. But I was like, okay. <laughs> I think my favorite in that series is though the Ember in the Ashes, the first one. Yeah. Well, that's what happens to me all the time with young adult. Is like the first book is like so cool concept. I'm getting used to things and seeing things and. Not every author is skilled enough to like let that pan out. Like there are so many YA dystopians where I'm like, oh, first book so good, and mm -hmm. by the third one, I'm just like, mm -hmm. why is this so long? What think, are we yeah. doing? I think the yeah. the arc of the Ember and the Ashes is the final book. You're in a very different place to the first book. Like it's a yeah. very different story. So like I think it was well mapped out in terms of the whole series, um, and I think I it is a satisfying like conclusion. So. Mm -hmm. I think also like because Steph and I have similar taste about a lot of things, but then also my friend Laura at a book circus also loves We Hunt the Flame and We Free the Stars, and also loves Amber in the Ashes. So, hmm. yeah, I mean, I think they're very similar. I think that if there are certain things that you like in one, you'll probably find it in the other. But I do admit that We um, Hunt the Flame is more character driven than Ember initially starts out. But I think that Ember in the Ashes becomes like this story that doesn't necessarily focus in but is a lot about like these characters changing and changing a lot of their mindset because I know people love Helene but Helene is like a huge colonizer and her whole well, I thought people hated I haven't even read it I thought people hated her <laughs> they they like her because she has in the beginning the most personality I guess but I love Laia a lot of people think that she's a wet blanket <laughs> so, but I love her I love her. Um, but I think all of the characters have like really interesting character arcs. And by the end, you feel very differently about them. And I actually, I think I love Ember in the Ashes, the first book. It's probably my favorite. But Reaper at the Gates is actually one of my favorites, too, because it's like there's such a turn in the story. And it's really interesting, but sad. I'll have to start that one or try it next next year because... I, I mean, they're very easy to read. Pretty booked up right now, but <laughs> I, because I have been, when I took so long, like I had a epic year long, like a reading slump that I was only doing like school and, and whatever. And then getting back into reading, I was reading a lot of young adult. And I think I like read so much that I started just to be like, because, um, you know, I got back into Sarah J. Bass and Lee Bardugo. And so I just haven't been reading a lot of it recently. And it stinks because I feel like some of the most diverse and like different stories are coming out in young adult. Yeah. Um, it's definitely slower in adult fantasy. And so I want to like give that a try. We hunt the flame. Have you, has anyone read Iron Iron Widow? Oh, no, I have I'll it. have to soon, but I'm excited for it. I read the Gilded yeah. Ones, which no one's talked about. But yeah, I haven't I like I haven't read that one either. I don't know if that's going to be a duology or a trilogy, but I actually, I'm weird. Most people, when they review that one, say it, it reads young. I don't, I guess I don't know what young, young adult reads like, because I literally read only like five young adults a year, maybe. I'm, like, I'm blanking on what the Gilded Ones is. Is it's that the one where they bleed gold Florida? and like, if you bleed gold, they like kill you. But this one was special. She got taken away to go serve her country because. Mm -hmm. Oh my like, God, I'm stupid. I've read this, but I read it like <laughs> I read it as an arc whenever it first came out. And well, I it was supposed it. to come out in 2020, but got yeah. pushed to 20. Yeah. So I got um, an arc like super early for it and then it just like never came out. And I was like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the next one comes out soon, has a cover. It's the Deathless Ones. Um, but I'm like, 
one of the people who like I really liked how it read and I don't actually know what it means for a young adult to read young but I guess it reminded me of thought processes and relationships I formed when I was 14 so maybe that's mm -hmm. what it means but yeah I, I haven't and the covers okay in YA the covers I'm <sighs> I'm upset about it. They're just so, I'm like, I just want to buy them all. They're also they're just beautiful. cheaper books. They're the same amount of pages and they're cheaper books and it drives me crazy. Don't, let's not get into it. The Look, cover of okay. an adult novella, okay? Hardback it's book, this thick. Guess how much it is? $18. Yeah. All right, paperback. Adult, guess how much this is? $20. $20. Like, why? It's a scam, Okay. It's upsetting to and me. They, and they like pretend girl. like young adults actually buy these books. No, it's just adults. Maybe they're yeah, moms. Like, what are we talking about? They're actually we're doing it ones. for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Do y'all have any more that you'd like to recommend? I don't think I have any more here. I'm I have more on my list. Jemison, but I don't have to talk about it. I'm just going to like. What is that one? Is that a okay. certain like, mythology? There definitely is a country. So this is a world. So it's it's diverse in its cultures. There's definitely a country that is similar to a African country. I don't know which one. I don't know if it'd be Western or Eastern Africa or North Africa or anything like that. Because like I said, she kind of just pulls from a bunch of cultures mm -hmm. and does stuff. Um, so what happens in this one is our main character comes from this African inspired country because she's called by her grandfather. who's like, I am naming you heir. But what that kind of means, because her mom was exiled, is that she has to be in this competition with the other two heirs. And like right away when she shows up, they try to kill her. So that's kind that's of sweet. like the stakes at the beginning of this. <laughs> wow. Jumping yeah. Right in. It's not really like a competition story. It's really just like, you know how like in Greek mythology, God's met families are messy as hell. Mm -hmm. It's about that. It's about like really messy God family stuff and how that affects mortals and the interactions between mortals and gods. And she's just mm -hmm. the first human we see interacting with that. Okay. I have that. I have the first and the third book. Don't ask. <laughs> but is is the trilogy? Are they all like direct sequels? Or you do have like, to read them in order because they timeline. Like I said, the geopolitical consequences keep going. But the first book has one character. And the second book has a different character who is blind. I really like her. Ore is a blind artist who mm -hmm. um, who you get to follow. And she kind of has like a enemies to friends to lovers arc, which is really cool. Like Jemison love arcs aren't like the main thing ever, but I really liked it. And <laughs> that one's like 10 years after this book. And then the next one's like 100 years after the other oh. one. But does Ooh. follow a character that you have met in this book. Okay. So it's more like for you, Abby, the Divine Cities trilogy. It's very similar to that mm -hmm. in terms of like how... You follow different people. I don't know. But I'm not saying Abby should read this because Abby's going to hate it and make me hurt. So I'm just going to say no. But that <laughs> type of trilogy where like... <laughs> where you have different characters. I mean, it's not a continuous up. thing, but you still need to read it in order because like yeah. the setting, it, it assumes you know what happened before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm looking, you're like, do not read this, but it is similar <laughs> to... <laughs> I don't like when my friends read books that I like and then don't like them. I would just I know. rather they not. I kept telling Jashana, I'm not going to listen to your Voxer message talking crap about Dara. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and like, I don't need to know. And I was like, nope, I'm not listening to the rest <laughs> of <Don't> it. <laughs> I refuse. Yeah. And then like her video, we've been having a Twitter beef because I'm like, yeah, what you're not going to do is disrespect my man. And That's, she I uploaded like that. an hour long. And I was Steph, like, you I haven't read City of Brass? <gasps> Steph, Steph, Steph. I'm actually should, planning. Uh, you get a little. You'll get a little sneak peek. I'm actually planning on doing a vlog where I read the whole series. Yeah, Steph. What are you? When okay. now? <laughs> I read We Free the Stars. I'm like, oh, this is like Davabad trilogy light. I'm like getting the same Ooh. emotions. It's not as good, but it's like fine. It's like fun. That's I'm so like much. sure. <laughs> Am I? I swear we. Okay, I guess not. <laughs> I swear you hey, so you, when you all say you're going to do this, you're going to do it like Tonight? today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, forget well, like November vibes. No seasonal ahead. reading. Log Pick off. it up. Just go ahead. I mean, <laughs> sure, sure. I could start soon. I just, I only need to finish one book and I, I'm, exactly. I could start it. Exactly. So, because, so like, wait. the funny part about it is I've gotten every single book as it's come out, and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna read this, I'm gonna read it. And then everybody says, like, oh, this is the best series, my favorite series of all time. And 
this owns me. All these characters own me. And I'm like, oh, God, what if I hate it? Well, I've read it three times. My, my <laughs> ratings for it are four stars for the first book and then five for the following two, with the second one being my favorite. So if you, like, read the beginning of City of Brass and you're like, I don't know, just, like, give it a minute. It's, it's a little slow. Sl- <laughs> just give- I guess I do have one book in my stack that I hadn't talked about, but this is Trail of Lightning by yeah. Rebecca Ooh, Horse. Oh, yeah, I haven't read that one, Trail of Lightning. Yeah. I mean, it's if you like the monster hunter character who hates themselves, like that trope that's always in TV shows and stuff like that, it's like, I have a dark past. I hate myself. How dare I? That's Maggie. Um, <laughs> Maggie has some self loathing. Um, but then you Kai, and Kai's just such a cinnamon roll sweet guy. And they're just like a partnership trying to solve this mystery in the um, oh, Denita lands. Mm-hmm. Um, we're also in a futuristic world where most of the United States is underwater. I, I think we could argue there is no United States anymore. I think it's just the Mormons and the Denita. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dang it. I can't remember. Is this going to be a trilogy? I think it's one of those series that's like a Sean and McGuire where it's supposed to, in theory, go on for as long as it wants. Okay. But currently only two books are out and it annoys me. And I don't know what her writer's block situation is with this series. And I'm trying to be respectful, but I like this more than Black Sun. (laughs) And I'm just like... (laughs) It's so hard. You're like, I know you're a human and and writing is hard, but also... But I'm like, stop writing your middle grade. Give me this. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Stop writing Black Sun. Stop. Focus I own group. both Black Sun and Trail of Lightning. I haven't started either because neither of them are complete. And I will say, like, both of, like, they're very much like that type of genre fiction where it's like, in theory, yes, it leads into another story and you probably want the other book sooner rather than later. But it's like a, it's like a monster of the week type of story. You know, mm. it's, it's that yeah. type of thing. Um, <clears throat> It's a bad down family in the second one, but the second one's not my favorite because of a thing that people who have read the series know. Um, but that's why I want the third book because the third book <laughs> will fix the thing that happened in the second book. <laughs> anyway, I'll have to wait a spell. Yeah, I mean they're short, that. and I like the covers. I think they're pretty, and I just I love a monster hunter who hates themselves. Hello, Witcher. Like I, I like that. <laughs> like, I could okay. I could not get into the Witcher, but you the know, books aren't very good. But, oh well, that's what I try. That's what I tried to get into. Do you into. think it's the story or the translation? So I've read the short stories, and I love the short stories. I think the problem with the novels is he tries to get too cute about narrative structure and world building, and I'm like, sir. And then he also treats it like short stories, but doesn't call it a short story anthology. So you're expecting a novel experience, and it's not. So I think that's the problem with the novels, and I do think the novels. He, I think, he, you know how some authors create a character that everyone loves, but the author hates. Mm-hmm. Like, I think the guy who created Sherlock Holmes didn't like Sherlock Holmes, you know, like that sort of thing. <laughs> I think he hates Geralt. Like, I think he hates him because he doesn't write from Geralt's perspective, like in the novels at all. <laughs> Which, I like, he's that was the main dude. It's, it's misnamed. It's, the series should be called, like, Cirilla or, like, the name <laughs> of the land or anything but The Witcher. <laughs> like, the short story books are good, and I actually will yeah. reread the first one because I really like it. But, um, yeah. I'm excited for the sec- second season. I know everyone's on like a wheel of time kick right now, but I'm like, what's your season two? <laughs> so. Oh, wheel of time. Hey, you know, you're yeah. the one who's still reading it. I mean, so am I. I'm on the second. I, I was a year a- further a- than me. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, but I already know I hate myself. So <laughs> I want to talk about the wheel of time, but related to this video, were there any other re- recommendations? So then I can. No, I am. I, um... okay. All done. I mean, yeah, well, I feel like I have used up my sack. <laughs> well, now you know you have heck of recommendations or books inspired by different countries and mythologies, and my Goodreads to be read is <laughs> so long now. But yeah, think all of uh, the content creators involved in this video, all channels will be listed down below. And uh, thank you for watching. I think that's it. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yay, support Warhoppers. Woo! Bye. <laughs> you made bye. it this far. You're the best. Yes. <laughs>